So here we are, we're coming to the final stages of the timber frame mailbox. We're gonna try a new technique today that I've never tried before called draw boring. All right, so in this episode, we are going to do our draw boring and our pegging. So before we do that, we need to lay out exactly where these pegs are gonna go. So remember, we went in there at a 45, it's, we gotta find kind of where the center of that tenon is because you know, it's sticking inside the wood here, right? So if we come over here, so it's kind of, just to, to visualize it here, we'll draw it out. We know that it goes in 90 there, comes in at 45, and that it's three inches. That was the length of our tenon from the shoulder right here. So if we draw it out, what's exactly inside the wood is this right here. This one here is different. We've got a lot more material. So we got, we got six and a half, so we'll go three and a quarter. So if we mark here on the edge, and then we come down three and a quarter, right? Three and a, only doing math on the camera is pretty scary stuff right there. Man, I am so excited. This is the, this is the best, best part. What a great day. Great day, nice and cool too. We're not gonna be hot today. So before we drill, we're gonna to take everything apart. So we'll carefully knock all this apart. So I had some, uh, I have some really good news to share with you guys. It was very exciting for us anyway. Um, the, our channel, the channel, Rangistar channel, it just continues to surprise me. It just gets, gets, keeps getting bigger and bigger. I don't know where the limit is. Last night or yesterday, the last 24 hours, we had almost just under three quarters of a million video views in 24 hours just unprecedented. I want to thank everyone for the being so faithful with the channel and supporting us and watching the videos. We, we feel very blessed uh, to be able to do this and we're grateful. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for that. Something I, I remember when I started the channel, if I would have got three quarters of a million views in a year, I would have been on cloud nine. Never, but I ever thought something like this was possible. So I don't know if you noticed or not, but the, the picture quality is going, should be quite a bit different than it's been the last year or so. I've changed the settings on the camera. I thought it was just seemed like it was a little bit flat and dull, but it might, should, be, should be crisper now. All right. So here we go. So Jack is, I got Jack today. We are having homeschooling subject woodworking today. You want to chuck this up here? So one thing that's kind of tricky with the, the bit and brace on a big hole like this is, is to drill straight. And that's what we're going to work on here today. So we're going to drill a one inch hole. We'll take turns. I'll do one and then you do one. I will say this is a lot funner than math. <laughs> well, you get to do both today. You need, immense, you need to do immense power to get it around that little turn area over there. You need to get it going quickly. Yeah, momentum start. definitely helps, but it also comes at the expense of accuracy. So go ahead and check your bit, see if you're poking through it all. Nope. So hold it, before you start, Jack, we're gonna need to be able to feel the bottom of the auger. So what will we have to do to the timber so that that can happen? Um, can you flip it? No, we have to drill from the top. But what's going to happen in the end? How will we fill the end? Um, we put it on two pieces of wood like this. Or we could just move this, right? Oh. So I'm going to move that. So it's really important in this one because this is going to show that we take our time and when we, as soon as we feel this coming through, we're going to flip it over and then come in from the other side. It's cool. If you look down the thing, you can down the little turning, you can see it a little bit of light just going in a circle. I'm getting pretty deep. I'm trying to, to push it as hard as I can. Go to the middle. What should you do over here that would mitigate your losing your timber? There you go. Now you're cooking. Roll it over.
So what you did there, that's perfect. See how it's just a tiny little bump? Mm -hmm. Now you'll have a little bit of wood for your bit to bite in. You're gonna get a cleaner hole. That's much better. Go ahead and drill that out. All right. Make sure you start nice and straight. I like when it first starts and it makes a little line in the wood. I do too. So Jack, I want you to go ahead and fit that mortise and tenon together. So what we're going to do today, it's called draw boring. Mm -hmm. And it means we're going to offset these holes. And it's a way of uh, connecting our mortise and tenon that, that will work to pull them even tighter together. We're not going to go straight through, but we're going to mark it. So put your bit and brace in the hole. And all we're going to do is we're going to make a, smite, a small impression or an indentation in it. Make sure that we're straight like this. We're going to go down until we come in contact with the, and we're going to press that. You can hear the wood crunch a little bit. Mm -hmm. Back it out. This is all we're doing is just marking. We're not do, actually drilling anything. We're going to go down and give it a press. Let's back this tenon out until we can expose both those holes. Go ahead. Okay. I'll hold this. Okay, looks good. All right, so what we're gonna be doing here is called draw boring, and it's a method that we can offset the holes to pull our joints even tighter together. So you can see where Jack drilled right there, that's where our actual, the holes are on our mortise. So we can come over here, I'm gonna come over here about um, 3 16 on the back side, I'm gonna make a mark there, and the same over here. So we're gonna come over about 3 16 like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to drill the hole in a little, in just a bit of a different position right here. That knee brace was pretty weathered, so I just took the gray off and brightened it up a little bit. So many of you weighed in on the on what we should do with the back side of this tin in here, and the majority of you thought that we should do an angle, match the top here. So I've got a well, my thanks, a shout out to Uber subscriber, super subscriber, my man Big Lou sent me this beautiful tool. Man, it's one of my favorites. Absolutely love it. Thank you so much for this, Lou. I am very honored to be its current caretaker. But we can use this, really. It's a great tool for finding our angle, so we'll just simply put that on there. Match up what we have so we're nice and uniform. Lock it down. So what I was thinking, we'd probably come out here about uh, maybe a couple inches or so. What do you think there? 
Should we angle it back this way? I forgot. What was I going to do? Or was I going to angle it back this way? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I think it needs to angle back this way. Let's come out here. We'll come out here a couple inches. Let's see. Probably something like that right there, huh? That, that looks pretty good. How about that? Can you, can, can you imagine it? Well, the die is cast now. That's what we're going to go with there. Boy, my new, my new Japanese timber framing saw is coming in the, from Amazon today. I can't wait for that. So that looks pretty cool. I like that. All right, so we'll put a little, we'll put a little chamfer 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 on the ends of these and then we'll draw a bore a lot of comments and about this being excessively built or or overbuilt and it, it, it actually it's not um, I guess that's probably that's coming from folks that are not familiar with timber framing because timber framing I mean the minimum size Timbers that we'll be working with typically are going to be six inch, and that's what we have here. We got a four by six and a six by six. I mean, this is just pretty much standard. So uh, it's just the, it's the nature of it. It's not it's not excessive. I'm just going to take my little low angle plane there and put a nice little chamfer on here. By knocking these angles off here, it, it gives it a makes it looks nice, and it gives us a uh, more durable edge. It's less likely to splinter. Now, when you're doing this, make sure you come from both sides. You don't want to go all the way across because you'll knock those unsupported excuse me those fibers off. So come from come from both sides there like that. So I went out to the street where the mailbox is going to go and this, I had this running wild, running longer than I wanted it to because I, well, I had, just hadn't got around to measuring it. So it came out to, or it came out to 54, come out, great. My public education rears its ugly head daily. Came out to 54 inches, transferred the angle here matching. So all three angles are the same. So we'll cut this to length here. Oh man, that's my cross to bear here. Cutting straight lines with a handsaw. I think the key to success here is to have a, a loose and natural grip. I gotta check myself. Sometimes I find I'm holding on to the saw like grim death. A lot of tension in this timber. going to be nice. So this is our last chamfer. Knock those off. So this is my mailbox. It's not a particularly nice mailbox. It's made out of plastic, but it's uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's one I have and it'd be wasteful to just to throw it away because the it's inevitable some philistine will come by and knock it off with a baseball bat and then we can maybe upgrade it to a little nicer metal one but in the meantime we'll just use this one so i don't want to modify my uh upright there to accommodate this because this is designed you can see there for either a two by four or it's like maybe a two by six kind of a clever design there you can use it for, for either one whatever side post you have but traditional not full dimension like we have here. So what we're gonna do is we'll just get a traditional two by six and we'll screw it to the top. It'll all be hidden. This will sit flush underneath there. And then when uh, uh, the next mailbox we get, who knows what that base will look like, but at least it'll give us a few options. I'm gonna go cut that now and we'll, we'll get this mounted up. All right, there's only one thing left to do. I've got this really awesome hot glue gun I got from Harbor Freight. We'll hot glue that on there and it'll be nice.
Oh, you didn't actually think I was going to use a glue gun, did you? <laughs>